Thank you for tuning in to another edition of the Vulcan Report. I'll try to make this video as, as short as possible. Sometimes that's a little bit difficult to do. Uh, recapping, um, the last video, last couple videos, um, I told you that um, we were topping out in the equities markets. And if we did not close um, beyond certain periods, I gave you the Dow, the S&P, the NASDAQ. And uh, you saw that we failed and that we didn't close above those levels. And so um, even though the long, the longer term trend per se is uh, slightly bullish, we have now officially entered into bear market territory in the three indexes with the exception of the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ has not quite gotten bearish yet. What we did was we uh, found support and closed inside of the Kumo cloud of death wherein the Dow and the S&P has broken below the Kumo cloud of death and has now entered into uh, sideways to slightly lower prices. Okay. Uh, it is my opinion that we're probably going to base between um, the, the lows of today and somewhere around the long term trend line support and then we'll probably bounce and resume from there. And, we're, and, and I think the sign to look for will be Friday as we climb the wall of worry with the uh, abysmal job numbers. If we can start to rally on, on poor data, then that lets us know that the lows are in. And we should now resume the opposite scenario that I talked about on Wide Awake Radio, where we start seeing new all-time highs in the equity markets. And then that should also mark the beginning of the hyperinflation. And I think that we're seeing that now in the uh, metals because gold broke out and silver has now broken out of the Kumo cloud. And I think we're going to close uh, outside of the cloud for Wednesday. I strongly believe that we are going to do that. We're going to close outside of the cloud for Wednesday. And then we're going to begin, uh, or I should say resume, uh, a bullish uh, overtone market in silver. And we'll, we'll be taking out that $50 high soon. So it looks like silver will be back in play again. As long as we can close above that 4106 outside of that Kumo cloud, we are, we're all clear. All systems go. And we should be able to really uh, start seeing um, silver start out, outperforming gold again. So get ready for that, okay? Um, also, as far as what I'm seeing in the markets, I'm seeing 2008 play out all over again where we had a crash, then we had a, co a minor correction, and then we continued to crash into 2009. I think that's happening now. Um, as we should have seen a bottom in equities for Tuesday, we should start retracing at least get up to closest to 50% retracement as possible. That would put us around 23.20 in the uh, in the Nasdaq, and then from that point on, we may even get up to 23.38 and a half, and then we we'll, we should start seeing uh, the market you know collapse and we we start to see that that bear market but not until the Nasdaq turns bearish the Nasdaq is not turned officially bearish yet and is a strong buy from these levels from 2286 onward actually the range will be between the, the low the exact low of 2277 and a quarter which was last night's low print up to 2286 that is the buy range or the support range I should say so we have like about a $10 I'm sorry not $10 a 10 point cushion of support in the Nasdaq that we should not trade below we may test but not we should not take out the overnight low if we take out the overnight low of 2277 and a quarter in the Nasdaq futures then all bets are off and, and we're going to see that 2008 scenario play out um, and it's going to get really crazy However, if we can maintain that support, then we should see uh, continued rallies there. People want to know why is gold and silver rallying? Well, again, gold and silver is money and nothing else, right? So it's acting like a currency. It's trading like the, the euro and the yen and the U.S. dollar. 
it's it's pricing in hyperinflationary scenarios coming in. Even though bond yields are lowering as the, the the Treasury yields are rising, I think that scenario is about to be reversed too, and we're going to see a major crisis develop in the bond markets as rates go through the roof. In order for rates to go through the roof, bond prices have to collapse, right? So that's that inverse uh, relationship. So I think we're going to start seeing the Treasuries correct and correct strongly uh, we just topped out at 127.11 in the 10-year uh, note, and now we're at 126.29, so we're already starting to pull back some. We're down about uh, 10 ticks, so um, I think as that continues, we're going to really start seeing uh, big, big, big developments. And we will know that we're on board for this and that these scenarios are playing out when we see these certain markers. The major telltale sign will be when we see bonds drop below par again. All right. So once we drop below par, which is 100 on that 10 year note, all bets are off. We start seeing just just rates going ballistic. You start seeing rates like they were back in the 70s at 22 and 25 and 30 percent. All right. So that's what's going to happen. The cost of borrowing money is going to go up. As of right now, it's being held at bay because of the very, very high bond prices right now. So, uh, moving right along real quick, let's just look at some charts real quick. Um, what I'll do is I will post uh, everything on the blog. Just so you know, when I don't have time to do videos every day, I, I at least update the blog so you can see what's what. I won't go over any specific entries and exits on the video for time's sake. If you want to see recommended entries... Um, as far as trade recommendations or whatever with, with, with the system spitting out, visit the blog, and that's paulscan.blogspot.com. All right, moving right along. Let's pull up uh, goals chart first just so we can get an idea of um, what the chart patterns are looking like. Okay, huge bar here, okay? We just broke out of our latest pulse wave after a week, uh, week and a half long of consolidation. We're breaking out now, hitting new highs, getting toward that 1700. Um, we we rallied up like 40 bucks yesterday, huge, up 2.47 percent. Um, strong breakout. We expect higher prices still. We do have a, uh, a swing VIX reading of 38, so we're 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 getting close to that overbought scenario again. But remember, the last time we got overbought, all we did was base out. And then uh, just enough to get from an overbought condition, and then we we bullied up again. So I, I see this stair step scenario continuing to play out. Um, as far as momentum, we're still we're still we still have strong bullish momentum as gold is under heavy uh, accumulation. Um, so we do expect the 12, 12 to eighteen month price target now has been moved to twenty one thirty eight thirty in the gold. So well over $2,100 an ounce is the 12 to 18 month price target on that. As for volatility, we did close above the upper band by 1.5%. So we expect this uh, long term uh, to continue. Yeah, I, I don't see it stopping anytime soon right now. Um, but again, we could have pullbacks back down into the cloud at the 1530 mark and still be bullish, even drop below it. And as you can see now, the long term period support uh, trend line is rising. Okay, that is very bullish. Okay. All right, let's take a look at silver. So as you can see, silver has struggled a long time to get out of the Kuma cloud of death, moving sideways, and now we're bumping up against this uh, Kuma resistance again, and we're looking to break that. And if we break that, then we should have a fast track to forty-five dollars um, in the silver. However, if we fail and we cannot get consecutive closes outside of the Kumo cloud at 4106, then we will immediately go back down and um, collapse below that 3559 Kumo support. And then all bets are off because we will trade below the $34 um, long trend line support. And we'll, we'll, we should crash through it pretty hard. And who knows where we will stop. 
in the Kumo cloud, okay? So that's where we are right now. But I, I, I truly believe that we're in a turning point in the silver and that uh, pretty shortly it should start out performing gold again. So silver should be back in play. And it's great because we, we remember what silver did for us before in the last love letter that we wrote to silver. Looks like silver is responding and saying that, you know, I love you too. And let's have some good times again, like back here. See this nice wild run up we enjoyed? Just every day, new highs. We're about to see that again as soon as she gets out of the cloud. Now, in all seriousness, uh, those of you who are members of the Black Ops trading room, you know that we, we, we teach there that we do not fall in love with, with any particular market. But this is just tongue in cheek and all, and you know, add a little bit of humor to it. Uh, talking about our, uh, uh, our relationship and trading certain securities, especially when they're trending. Um, so that's what this is about. So before anyone starts saying, hey, I thought you said don't do that, that's what this is about. All right. So anyway, moving right along, let's take a look at oil because that came up last night on the Wide Awake Radio program as well. Uh, what do you think about oil? What does oil uh, have to do with all this? Well, oil is in an official uh, bear market. And unless we get something to really interrupt the supply chain, um, we have nowhere to go but down um, in the crude oil, and we're already starting a new, uh, a new trend, uh, a new pulse wave. We're in jeopardy of starting a new pulse wave, and we could get a wave like this. All right, and the top of this was around the 102, and then we got to the bottom here of 86. So you could you could expect another 10 to 20 dollar pull back from 93 easily and that'll put us well below $80 a barrel that psychological $80 a barrel um, that's where we are uh, we're below the cloud we're about to break this long-term trend line support like we did back here so for this time I don't think we're gonna we're, we're gonna look back I think we're gonna keep going and uh, I don't know if there's anything that can stop the train down yesterday about a buck seventy. Right now we have a negative swing VIX. Uh, it's a negative eighteen. Have a lot more downside to go, and we do have a, a downtrend channel as you can see here, well defined, well well formed, and the trend strength reading is bearish Kumo breakdown. All right, with bearish momentum, we've broken out of the cloud to the downside, and we see that accelerating. Okay, so. Be on guard if you are thinking that we're bottoming anywhere in the crude oil. We are hitting a long-term trend line support, but this support is not as strong as it was prior to, to here. Uh, it was violated and done so pretty significantly by several bucks. So there's no, there's no way that you can say that we're just going to bounce from here when your support's down here now. So we're, we're coming, we're gunning for this support down here. All right, and this is going to take you to uh, the 88.89 handle in the crude oil. So be prepared for that. And then last but not least, looking at the uh, the Nasdaq, like I said, it's the only one out of the the three between the S&P and, and the Dow that are that still um, not below the Kumo cloud. So we're still we're still bullish, which means we're, we're using the Kumo cloud as a, as a support mechanism instead of a consolidation mechanism. And as long as we can um, close outside of this cloud in the next trading session, it will set the pace for uh, higher prices in, in the NASDAQ futures. And right now, um, that, that price that we need to, to close outside of is the 22.99 and a quarter. So if, what, as long as we can get back up to the 23 handle, we're good to go and it sets the pace uh, for higher prices and for us to retrace some of this uh, this this parabolic bar right here, and then that'll set the tone for the other indices. So right now, still bullish, bullish until we crash below uh, the Kumo cloud. All right. So yeah, we have some downward momentum, and it's going to be very hard to break all of this on the upside. But as of right now, um, we are technically inside the consolidation Kumo cloud and we could very well just move sideways from here but chances are 
um, there's going to be some buying. And we'll, we'll get that test on Friday and see if we can climb that wall of worry. So until then, remember, take what you can and give nothing back.